Welcome back to the table. Today, Ryan and I have a preview of the next Stefan Feld City Collection game. This one is called Vienna. It is number five yeah. in the City Collection. Probably we're to five already. And this is a re-implementation, if you're not familiar, with La Isla, which is probably one of his lighter games. Uh, but I can tell you, this ratchets it up a couple notches because with the sort of advanced game that they have included, plus a couple of modules, but even without those modules, it definitely raises with the advanced stuff yeah. it to more of a medium weight euro for sure. Well, if you haven't been paying attention to the City Collection, it's given Feld the opportunity, opportunity to do a few different things. One is to kind of add more development and take feedback yeah. from years of the game and into it. And secondly, to include what are effectively expansions to the base game, which we've gotten here as well that really do ratchet up the gameplay. And the third is a chance to kind of bring in a new theme. And I will say in this particular instance, oh, taking yeah. the theme away uh, from like looking for animals in the jungle to Vienna, which takes place during the Cold War, very different theme, has you running around this board as agents collecting information instead of pictures of animals. For me, it works a lot better to explain the mechanics and the game actually feels a little bit more cohesive to me with this like spy versus spy theme. It does. As I started reading the rules, I wasn't sure. But then when I first taught it, I've taught it a couple times now. It does really come through because you are organizations placing agents out into these buildings using bribery mm -hmm. uh, instead of the resources you'd normally spend to place them. And then you're trying to surround these other sections that have secret information. And that secret information is going to be stuff that you collect. And then as you play the game, the different types of secret information are going to increase in value to differing degrees. So some secret information is worth quite a bit. So you're going to want to collect that and maybe not so much of, of the less valuable secret information. But for the most part, the base structure is a lot like La Isla. And the game plays in a very interesting way. As you, what you see here on the table here is the main board, and this looks quite different than oh, what yeah. you might have expected because it used to be a round board, not like a network of cities, but it effectively achieves the same thing. You can see these cities right here, and these are where you're going to be placing your agents. Yeah, the buildings, I'm sorry. And the buildings, this is the advanced side, have a few different icons on them. There's going to be the bribe type. This is sort of the color of the building. That's what you have to spend two bribes to place an agent there. And then there's a couple more icons. In the basic game, there's always gonna be a flag, but in the advanced game, you have this other little seal here as well. These are going to come into play for a number of different things based on getting missions to yep. collect and achieve, as well as some other cards that will basically trigger off some of those things. Yeah, and your idea, the whole idea of the game is that you're trying to collect this secret information by placing agents in all of the buildings surrounding that particular piece of information, which is harder than it sounds because like David said, you need specific colored bribes in order to come there. You'll also notice that each one of these flags corresponds to different missions. So you'll need to make sure that you're in a location that either gives you the mission or allows you to complete the mission. Yeah. So you're trying to worry about that. You're also trying to worry about these icons. And to top all of that off, these multi-use cards are potentially giving you special abilities as well. They give you benefits for going to specific locations. So you're trying to kind of balance all of that in. At the same time, watching what other players are doing, increasing the value of other secret information and making some of these tokens worth more or less. So there is actually quite a bit going on here, but it's all kind of being handled just by these multi-use cards. Yeah, the multi-use cards, if there's one big mechanism to take away from this, it is the multi-use cards. And we love multi-use cards. I don't know That's, anyone no, who I doesn't do. like it's them. It's so much fun. And over here on this side of the board is going to store the multi-use cards. And again, depending on what version of the game you're playing, there's going to be more or less cards in these stacks, as well as the different types of bribes that you can have, and then the missions across the top of the board. Over here, you're going to keep track of the value of all the different secret information, as well as this track that kind of tracks the end game. Now, in the advanced mode, you're also going to have this board up here. This is sort of a sideboard that's going to have things that you can purchase, including extra yeah. agents, another piece of table so you can store more cards, and then some of these desk tiles that give you typically ongoing abilities that you wouldn't otherwise have. Yeah. But like Ryan said, it revolves around the multi-use cards, and on your turn, at the beginning of a round, everyone draws three of those cards, and then simultaneously, everyone's going to decide where to place those three cards across the top of their player boards. There are four places, but three of them for cards. And each of the cards is going to do different things depending on where you place it. So you place a card in the one spot, 
When you use that, it's just gonna come down to the bottom of your board and you're gonna use the bottom of that card on an ongoing basis yeah, from that point forward. It's basically a special ability just yeah. for you. All of those are special abilities that have ongoing effects. So every round, that card's gonna go down there. The next card is simply gonna give you what's in the upper left-hand corner, which is a bribe. You're just simply gonna take more bribes from there and you wanna collect those so that you can get agents out on the board. The next space has nothing to do with cards. You're actually going to place an agent. Now you have some options in the basic game and the advanced game. If you place an agent, you're gonna place them out on the board, spend the bribes, check to see whether or not that placement surrounded a piece of secret information, take that information, take some points, that sort of thing, and then you're done. But if you don't wanna place or can't place agents for one reason or another, you can actually take any two bribes of the same color. So if you're low on bribes, which you will be during the game, you can. Or in the advanced game, you could also instead take three shillings, which is the money you're gonna use to buy some of those things. And then finally, yeah. there's this card, which is going to affect this track. Yeah, the fourth card uses the upper right-hand corner and is going to increase one of those symbols in value. When you do that, when you increase the value, you're also gonna get points for having collected those tokens. So theoretically, you wanna to try to collect tokens on the board and move that, that up. However, you're only getting three cards and you're assigning all three cards. And so the struggle of the game, the real difficult decision is how to use those cards, where to put them. Because you might have a color that you really wanna move up, but also that same card is what gives you the bribe token you'd that turn. Or a power. <laughs> or a power that's really useful, that's gonna score you a lot of points or give you some kind of benefit because to me, and I think to a lot of players, those powers are going to be the draw. And that's a, a yeah. really hard choice because you can only ever have three active puzzles unless, like David said, you get that desk extension. So you only have three active abilities. And so every time you take a new one, you have to replace one of the ones that you already had, which means you might have been relying on a certain combo and that combo is going to have to go away at a certain point. Yeah, that is one of the funny things that will happen in round number four because at the beginning of the game, you don't have any cards down there. So... First round, you add one of those ongoing yeah. abilities. Second round, the same. Third round, the same. That's all great. Fourth round, you take that card in the first position, and now, like Ryan said, you're like, oh, I have to replace one of these powers. And sometimes you don't want to get rid of any of your powers. No, but you have no choice. You, so have, you to. have no choice. You have to. So you're cycling through what effectively turns into sort of these micro engines in this game where you have this little sort of thing going on. You're looking at the board and what you can do out here and go, okay, I can do this and this. So I'm gonna keep these cards until I get those things accomplished because those will benefit me while I'm doing that. Then after I do that, then I can start considering replacing those. Yeah. But it is a lot to consider and a lot of planning, not to mention, like Ryan said, just deciding where you wanna position them across the top of the board. Yeah, there's one other thing that was added in that I really wanna talk about. and so. For people that played La, La Isla before, they never had access to this sideboard over here. And this yeah. is something you'd play in the advanced game. I don't ever want to play without that because that adds one more step into the game or one more thing that I think adds to the depth of the game. And that is these desk tiles, which is just one of those things you can buy. But each one of these desk tiles gives you special abilities. They let you use some of your bribery tokens as money. They let you collect extra money, collect extra victory points draw extra cards to have more cards to choose from every round. That's a really cool, I think, added element. Plus, even just buying that desk, buying those workers. I would always play with that advanced mode with that board added in. For sure, the advanced mode adds a lot of things. One of the things is that, and that's gonna be triggered as you go through the game. There are gonna be certain spots along the track that are going to trigger at the end of the round a purchase phase where everyone gets to purchase just one of yep. those things if you have money. The other thing that's gonna happen on that track twice is sort of a payday sort of situation. This is not a good payday. This is a feed your workers no, you, sort of payday. You are paying your agents. You are paying your They're agents. They're not paying you. So for every agent you have out on the board, you have to pay one shilling. If you can't pay one shilling, any agent who's out on the board you can't pay for has to come back. Now that is a big deal. Even though you can place agents from here or move them from the board, if you have all of your agents off the board, you have to do some rebuilding until you can actually surround some of that stuff and get that secret information back. Yeah, not to mention that some of the missions require you to have specific agents in specific locations on the board, either some of these lettered locations you might see or some of these symbols that you might see on here. And you wanna have agents in position already when you take your turn because those missions can be worth a lot of points, they can be worth a lot of shillings and things like that. So you wanna complete as many missions as possible However, of course, 
that's not always going to align with your goal of getting certain colored pieces of information. So no, those things are always at tension. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of things in this game that are always at tension where you're like, well, I need to do this. Oh, but I can't get a mission because all the missions require me to be in these other locations. And I want to talk about that in a second because this is the other thing I think you would agree you would never want to play yeah. without. The missions all have a flag in the upper left-hand corner and those are going to dictate where you need to be on your turn and not just be like as in you were there before, but it's where you're placing. So I have to place a guy in a US flag uh, place. And when I do, I have the option to either take a mission of a US flag place, so I could take this mission right here, or instead of that, I could resolve any missions I have with a US flag on them, again, as long as I have all of the things to achieve that. The cool thing about the missions is you're not spending any of the things on there. You literally just have to prove that you have that to make that achievement. Then you finish that mission. The other cool thing about missions is because it's all intertwined with this board over here. When you take a mission, you get some money. Yeah. If it's an A mission, you get one. If it's a B, you get two. An advance, it's, they call it. An advance on your payment. Uh, but then when you complete the mission, they all have rewards, and yeah. that's going to either be money points or a combination of the two. Yeah, I mean, they are they are hard to pull off when you consider that to do any one mission, you have to go to the United States flag to take it, and then to yeah. another United States flag to finish it. And for anyone that's worried, looking at the board saying, well, all these flags, you already know where they're going to be, you already know how to complete the missions. Well, we've got good news, actually. You can actually place flag tokens on each one of these buildings to change up its... Uh, allegiance, I guess I would, would call yeah, it. Yeah, it basically makes it variable. So if yeah. you want to, you can pull flags out of a bag and place them all over this so that it completely makes this setup completely variable because all of the secret information is going to come out yep. randomly and then all those flags as well. So it could really make the game feel quite a bit differently. And all of that is going to be something. This is one of those games, too, before you start playing, you're going to want to study the board. Because you're going to want to look, if there's a concentration of some of the secret information in an mm -hmm. area, and you all start with one secret information, so you might go, mm, I'm going to go heavy in that color secret information. You could start there and really put a bunch of people there, and as you move agents around, you're able to get secret inf information almost every turn for a little while and really start ratcheting this up and score yeah. some massive points at the end of the game. Yeah, and the game ending is player controlled. You're gonna be moving that inspector down that line by pushing forward some of these tokens across other lines. Yeah. And of course, in classic Feld uh, style, there is a definitely like a point out element coming going on here. Each one of the five pieces of information scores you points based on where you are. You're gonna get points for having these desk tiles. If you play the advanced mode, you're gonna get points for having agents on the board, whoever has the most agents is gonna get a lot of points. So there's a lot of things to think about, a lot of ways you can build into scoring points at the end of the game. Yeah, we got our points very differently throughout the game. Now, Ryan did beat me. Yeah, uh, again, that we 155 played. to 120, but also a, still a fairly close score. We were pretty close to one yeah. another. He had a few more mission points than I was able to get. But anyway, that is Vienna. If you have any questions at all, we'd be happy to get down in the comments and answer anything you might wanna ask. Until next time, of course, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then.